So in this section, we're kind of really going to explore this question of well, if we send humans into space, what can and will happen to them based on what we know and, and what are the factors here? So let's assume we do want to send people yeah. into space. Um, the first question is, would you just die? And, and that was a question they asked in the 50s and 60s, right? That's right. I mean, if you just imagine that you and your parents and your grandparents and your great grandparents and every ancestor you've had all the way back to the first slime mold four billion years ago, yep. they all lived in gravity with yep. the Earth's radiation environment with air around them. Yep. So even no, no one, there's nothing. There's been no yeah. evolutionary reason yep. to be able to cope with zero gravity, space levels of radiation and so on. Yes. And there are a lot of mechanisms in your body. That are, every cell yes. is insanely complicated. Surely, just by chance, one or other of those mechanisms will stop working. Yeah. And this is what people were worried about, that when you'd go into space, maybe a, a yeah. chemical reaction that produces energy in uh, mitochondria would stop working because it relied on gravity to get the molecules the right way around yeah, or something. Yeah. There could be something in your body that would just stop working and you just... Uh, yeah. It's such a different environment and such a complicated machine that you just need one thing to stop work. I mean, we've talked about how spacecraft stop working, right? So surely, human body could stop working. Now we know we can cope with at least a few seconds of zero gravity. I'm about to do it now. So yeah. while, okay. I'm in, while I'm in the air, it was I was in zero G before That's while right. I was in the air. So And I didn't die. That's right. So you, we clearly can at least for short-term adapt to that. But we didn't know for more than a few seconds whether yeah. you could adapt to zero gravity. And this was the reason for a lot of the early experiments putting animals yes. in space, whether it was monkeys for the Americans or dogs for the Russians. Or French for the cats. <laughs> uh, and so they put animals in space, and indeed the animals did not die. Yeah. So the most famous mission was Corrible Sputnik 2, known as Sputnik 5 in the West. Yeah. And this had two dogs, Belker and Stroker. This is their stuffed bodies from a Moscow museum. 42 mice, rabbits, cock flies, and other things. Yep. One whole day in space and they all came back alive. Um, however, one of the dogs had convulsions and vomited, <laughs> so it clearly wasn't going to be easy, but That's right. we now know they could survive. And, and, and some of the early ones, like Likey, that died and stuff like that, that was also because the spacecraft itself and re-entry was actually yeah. so the, the thing. The first dog, Laika, died yeah. because it overheated in the yeah. spacecraft. Exactly. So when you, they got the space engineering right, they were kind of fine. Yes. So, of course, time to send people up. Um, and... Uh, Huri Gagarin was only up yes. for a very short time, he had no problems. Yeah. But the first long duration, like, likewise the first two Americans, yes. but the first long duration space flight was Garman Titov in 1961. And he <laughs> has the distinction of being the first person to get space sick. Mm -hmm. This is known as space adaptation syndrome, or just space sickness, yeah. or space motion sickness. Yeah. Um, and it's basically the same sort of thing as you get seasick. Exactly. Yeah. I get horribly seasick when I'm on a boat. Oh, really? But as long as I've been on there for more than a day or two. You can adapt to it, yeah. Yeah, but by day two or day three, I'm usually fine. I mean, some people get car sick as well. Yes. And it's about 70% yes. of astronauts are affected. It gives them vomiting and nausea. But it goes away after two to three days in space. Well, in fact, famously, one of the Apollo missions was delayed launching because the command module pilot had this. And they delayed it. And it was fine for the rest of the mission. So you can get over it. It's just not pretty. And it's thought to be a problem yeah. with the vestibular system, the inner ear, the same as yep. seasickness and so on. The system tells you which way is up, and in space it's... <laughs> 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 so and this one kind of makes sense, right? You know, we, we know this problem exists on Earth. Yeah. More I mean, the vestibular system, I hadn't realised while I was researching this, the main purpose on Earth is to help cause your eyes to track things. Mm. So there's a very close link between your ears and your eyes, because, of course, your body's always moving around, but your eyes can compensate for That's that. That's right. So it's the fact that what you see and what your ears are telling you are in conflict, which causes seasickness, yes. car sickness, and space sickness. Yes. Not a major problem, um, except for a, you're not going to have a long weekend in space if you're going to be vomiting the whole time. That's true. But there are longer-term yes. problems, um, and there are three ones that are recognised by red flags by the various space agencies for long duration. Because it is not just that they create one thing, they create a litany of problems and so these are the broad topics that they need to solve. So one is prolonged yeah. microgravity. I should perhaps yeah, explain yes. microgravity. Yeah. We talk about it being zero G That's when you're right. floating but in it's, space. It's, it's not, right? Of course you've got the Earth's gravity yeah. up there but you're free fall. But in practice there's going to be small amounts of force due to the weight of things near you and rotation and yes. so on. So the technical term is microgravity but that means zero gravity. It, we use it interchangeably really. Yes, yeah, so right. if I say microgravity I mean zero gravity yeah. and vice versa. So being in microgravity for a long time, that's problem number one. Yes. 
Problem number two is the radiation in space. Yep. We've already talked about that for electronics. That's right. And problem three is the psychology of being stuck in this tin can for months and years. Yes. And they're all very different with very different outcomes in terms of health that all need to be solved and studied. And we'll go through them in turn.